I'd like to say good evening to everyone. My name is Peggy Trivis, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's lecture. I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools across the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Dean of the Syracuse Branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison. Now, in this school and throughout the lecture this evening, we'll be using a true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, <laughs> the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of your Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title Lord. For the Word, or Son, we use a divine title Elohim. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifesting in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is the title that your creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into an encyclopedia or dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, or the Latin language contain any character or letter in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible in untrue renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. And if you take a look at this chart, you'll see that we have this cloud painted all the way around the edges of the chart so that everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, takes on shape and takes on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by a divine vision and only understood by a divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah, whom the world has come to know erroneously as Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of our Savior during the time that he did walk the earth plane? You can get a better understanding of his name and title by reading a preface to a Holy Name Bible. Now also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and revealed this tabernacle pattern to him in a vision. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness of Sinai and build one exactly as he has seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. Um, in this school, we go about to show proof how everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
Now in this school we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives. They are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. I'd like to have this evening's de meeting dedicated with a prayer by Dr. Carm Warren. They'll be followed by a scripture reading, which is Ezekiel 36, verses 16 to 28. Our scripture readers this evening are Dr. Scott Miller and Dr. Deb Cometti, and we will have hospitality announcements by Dr. Tracy Bennett. Good evening. Let's bow in our hearts and minds. Yashua, we give you praise and thanks for having brought us to a place to show us the truth, to open up our hearts, to clean our hearts, to give us a heart that will accept the truth and provide us with cogent witnesses that builds our faith and all the witnesses that you have provided through the Law and the Prophets to point yourself out to us, the Tabernacle, all of your witnesses. We are humbled and grateful that we've been chosen to come into this teaching and that you continue to teach us and give us an understanding of your purpose and plan. And our hope is that you continue to do that. And with us, let us all say hallelujah. Good evening, class. Good evening. Tonight's scripture will be read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically comparing with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trena of the Scripture Research Association. <laughs> Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, verses 16 through 28. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a woman in her separation. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries, according to their way and according to their doings I judged them. And when they entered unto the nations whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of Yahweh, and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, 
Thus saith Yahweh, 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 I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the nations, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And I and the nations shall know that I am Yahweh, saith Yah Yahweh, before I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness, and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. That's Ezekiel 36, 16 through 28. I'd like to say good evening to all of you. It's a pleasure to see all of you tonight. Um, we have visitors with us tonight. We have a returning guest with us tonight. And I am just so happy to be here to learn more of my Yahweh Elohim's eternal purpose, pattern, and plan. For this is a school. This is not a church. And in a school, you continue to learn until you graduate. And this is a wonderful school because you'll never graduate from it. <laughs> you'll just keep on going on and learning for a very, very long time. So I'd like to welcome those who came to learn with us tonight and visit. Um, I'd like to say a warm Syracuse welcome to Dr. Victoria Hamilton from our Southfield, Michigan class. She's brought a guest with her, Dante Dana, and uh, he's been in to about six classes. And I'd like to welcome Dr. Lionel Vamajou from our Hamilton Canada class. And of course, all of my brethren that I see every single week, we are all one big happy spiritual family. And it's just a pleasure to see all of you and to be with you tonight. So with that, I'm gonna yield the floor because I'd chatter on if you let me. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. So thank you. And our first speaker this evening, we'd like to hear from our visiting member from Kingston, Canada, Dr. Lionel Vamajou. Hamilton, I'm sorry. What did I say? Kingston. Kingston. Oh, yeah, you're not Kingston. You want to go there. <laughs> Close enough. It's Canada. So what's, what's three hours? You know, this, this drive is three and a half, whatever. Kingston's three hours east of where I am. Anyway, um, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Victoria, your mom says hi, just so you know. The joys of technology. Yeah, she, you can't escape your mom, right? <laughs> that, as much as we start in jest, it's, it's, it's a representation of filial progenitiveness, right? You can't escape it. That's from a physical standpoint in terms of, you know, family. But also from Yahweh taking care of his family. And as Trissy was talking about one spiritual family, I've missed you guys here. As much as I'm not a Syracuse native, I'm, I don't have orange blood. And, you know, and I, I, I can shovel snow, but not as much as you guys can over here. Um, but I missed you guys. So the weather was clear. Yeah, it's cold, it's winter, whatever else. I better go now because you never know what the next week is. And, and like all things, you don't want to wait too long because you don't control anything, right? Mm -hmm. Every opportunity you have, you want to try and uh, partake of those things. So anyway, I want to thank you as well for the kindness you bestowed upon my daughter and the well wishes and curiosity. She's more in a better state in terms of resting and on some seizure medicine, anti-seizure medicine, not seizure medicine, anti. It's, a, it's important to get the words in the right spot. 
So it's uh, at 21, she's trying to figure out what to do, uh, what's next and whatever else, but that's just natural. And it's funny because she's had three seizures since November, 11th, since November 11th. And the first one, the first inclination was thinking it was related to thyroid. Thyroid issues, hey, are you taking your medicine? No, I don't like it, it upsets my stomach. Well, take your medicine, they start giving the medicine, and she starts getting better. So you start to think that it's the medicine that's the issue, but then you have seizure two and three when she's taking the medicine. So anyway, she's in Yashua's hands, not worried about it. You know, get a little nervous perhaps, but not worried about it. It'll come together the way it's supposed to. And really encourages myself from a standpoint to think about um, what's important and pushes you to investigate and check things out and to make sure that you have the proper representation in your corner to get things together, right? And what I mean by that is as much as we have free health care, there's several different doctors involved, so it's like you don't know who's on point, who's the quarterback of this situation from a physical standpoint. Is it the general practitioner, the neurologist, the endocrinologist, because she has three, and then, you know, whatever, but talking to you this afternoon, you don't know who's in control that way from a physical standpoint. From a spiritual standpoint, we know who's in control, and from a little kid growing up in these classes, it was always impressed upon me that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And of course, obviously, you know, everything the physical points to spiritual, but everything happens for a reason. But while you're experiencing, you don't understand the reason. You're just going through the challenges you have, but the reason is made manifest later on when you get, when Yahweh you know, does his will and puts you where he wants you to be. And then you look back over your shoulders, like, wow, I could never have written it up that way or scripted it up that way. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's amazing how these things work. So. But he's not slack concerning his promises. So let's do this. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and, and 11. So like I said, it's a pleasure to be here. It worked very nicely with the Buffalo class today from 11 till 1. There's a class two weeks from now in Buffalo as well, pop-up class. So if you're ever out that neck of the woods, uh, Marianne, Mike, the Lattimores, myself would love to see you there if you can. Or if you want to come up to Hamilton, you're always welcome to come up. There's the... The bread bar is a really nice pizza and stuff. Maybe not the same as Twin Trees, but or Twin Trees too. But please, if you want to come, please, because we have myself, Jeanette, and a, a lady that returned after our Hamilton event, and uh, she's really excited and so forth. But when you, it's you like to have other folks come because that way you spread out the wealth of knowledge. Because some people are special specialized in the tabernacle. Other people are really good with. Um, explaining the days of the universe and so forth. So I need your help. If, you, if you're ever up that neck of the woods, call me, let me know, because like you guys, so it's susceptible to weather. But let's go to uh, Isaiah 55, where it talks about Yahweh's thoughts and, and man's thoughts, please. Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. Yeah, that's for what... As the heavens and that's important. It's what Yahweh says. It's easy for man to figure out and think that he's got everything all figured out. But Yahweh says, hey, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. Right? Mm -hmm. We carry on. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So there's a big gap between the heavens and the earth. And you th think back, you know, whatever it was, 50 something years ago, whatever else, uh, Neil Armstrong and and the rest of the folks started to walk on the moon. That's a tremendous distance, and that's just the moon. Uh, not to belittle or minimize the thing, but that's a tremendous amount of energy and dollars and resources and, and uh, some uh, white-knuckle events to get to that point in time. But they're just to give you an example with the gap of difference. So you can't figure out what Yahweh wants to do, mm -hmm. let alone what the adversary is going to come at you and try and do as well, because he's also in play as part of offering that contrast to understand something about Yahweh's purpose and plan. He's there for a reason. Okay, read on. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not there, but waters the earth and makes <coughs> spring forth and bud. Yep, see, now that's what that water and there's, you know, you got lots of, this being a funny winter where you have lots of snow and then it melts and so forth. But when it comes to springtime, that water or the snow melts, it comes water, it's going to bring forth some vegetation. The seeds are all planted and the, naturally, and the farmers go out and plant their seeds. But you need that to bring forth that vegetation. There's a purpose behind all those things. And he's using this as an, Yahweh's using an example, explaining this to Isaiah so that we can understand things about Yahweh's purpose and plan. 
He set it up with the water to bring forth things. Okay, read on. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's right. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. See, so that word that go forth from, from Yahweh won't return void. And that's part of understanding the purpose and plan. That there's a pattern taking place here. That Yahweh in pure spirit state is coming on shape and form. And there's the word. Right? The word taking on the physical body is Yahshua the Messiah walking the earth plain. It's going to accomplish the Father's will. That the word of Yahweh is going to go forth and won't return to him void. Because he's there as an example, the first, I um, better be pointing over here because it's, it's about that resurrection, right? It's the, the first fruits, right? Mm -hmm. And he's out there dispensing. And lo and behold, those sons that slept in the earth, they also rose because they were ob obedient. And because they believed the report, you know, they were found in good, they received their righteousness by believing the report. Okay? They all set you up for the Pentecost, that Holy Spirit, and so forth. And that's where the, you know, the completing of the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, read on. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent yep. it. It's going to accomplish what He pleases it to be, right? When you look at the scripture lesson here, this sounds like there's some disobedience being described about in Ezekiel, where the people aren't paying attention to the things that Yahweh has said, right? And that's a problem. So let's start with the, uh, Ezekiel 36 and, uh, and 16. So Yahweh a was a good husband under the children of Israel down here and so forth, provided for them. Yes, things got tougher for them and so forth down here in terms of when the pharaohs had changed, had to do more with less materials and so forth, provided for them and gave them uh, you know, gold and silver and so forth and brought all kinds of raiment when they came out of Egypt. Not for their consumption, although, hey, look at all the booty. All the, the, the booty is like... Uh, Bountiful supplies. We're leaving here. <laughs> bounty, bounty. <laughs> Sorry, the vowels are important. So they're coming up here with all kinds of bounty. It wasn't for their pleasure. It was for building this tabernacle. And that's how Yahweh has his purpose and will set up beforehand that they're just were acting as vessels to go about bringing those things up here. Although Yahweh could will to be what he wills to be. You know, and just bring these things to the wilderness, but show a purpose and plan. Don't get caught up in what He gives you, because whatever He gives you, this is physically, but even the spiritual gifts you have, it's really to work His purpose. Some people are really good singers. Some people are really good with audiovisual. Some people are really good at reading. Whatever the talent is, it's all about providing, offering that up to help the brethren, to edify the brethren, to lift each other's arms up. That's what we come together in class. Whether you hear the same thing over and over again, it's really important to pay attention to these things, because... You don't want to take it for granted and miss out on these things. Okay? It's too easy to take things for granted. Okay? I'll read on? Or a scripture lesson? Ezekiel 36 and 16. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way. See, it's the word of Yahweh that's coming to the prophets. Okay? Now, if there's a difference between a lying prophet and a true prophet, and it speaks about that in Deuteronomy 18, and you can read about that and, and check it out for yourself. But the word of Yahweh is going to speak to Ezekiel. So if it's, Yahweh is not, not a liar, so what Ezekiel is saying that Yahweh gave him to say is going to come to pass. Okay? Otherwise, he'd be a liar and so forth, because there's many false prophets out there. But the true prophets hearken unto them, because they say what Yahweh has to say. And when you go to the beginning of Isaiah and Jeremiah and so forth, so the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, okay? So the word of Yahweh came unto them, okay? Read on. They defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they shed upon the land, and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Now, what are the children of Israel doing with idols? They're not supposed to have idols. Right? This isn't written to the general body. These, this is the children of, you know, Yahweh hasn't brought in the Gentiles at this moment in time. He's working with the children of Israel down here, you know, over here. So he promised them a land flowing milk and honey, and Abraham had to go to a, through his seed and so forth, go to a land they know not of, and brought down in Egypt, and brought them out of Egypt, a migratory pattern. But now, <coughs> they're over here in the land of Canaan. And their purpose is to share the land, but not take on the customs of the people that are there. Share the land, 
you know, go about your business, but don't take on a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Stick to what you're given, okay? And that's why it's important that even if you hear the same thing today as you hear five months ago or six years ago or 20 years ago, it's important to pay attention because it's easy to think get things mixed up or take it for granted. So now they're over here in this land and so forth, and they're not supposed to have idols over here. They have Yahweh Elohim, and when you look at the, ten, the commandments, um, Exodus 20, I believe it is. Exodus 20 and 1. Thanks. And Yahweh Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, See? out of the house of bondage. He's, I brought you out of, the, out of the house of bondage. I brought you out of Egypt. He's giving commandments unto them. Okay, read on. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I have no other gods before me. Thou right? shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath and that's, or that is in the water under the earth. And all those things, those, those creatures and graven images, those are all idols. People worship their idols. Now an idol isn't just necessarily, now if you pay attention to this, it's not just necessarily some kind of dashboard Jesus you have on your car or some kind of Buddha, Buddha statue in your house or some other thing at the church or whatever else it is or in a museum somewhere. It also can be your thoughts and opinions. You can be in love with your own opinions and your own understanding. You can worship yourself, and that becomes an idol, a sort of yeah. self-worship, right? I got it all figured out. Look at me. Right? You want to avoid those things as well. None before Yahweh. So he's telling them, this is given to them over here in the wilderness of Sinai. So when they're over here after they cross the River Jordan, they should by all means, if they were obedient unto what they received, shouldn't have any idols over here at all. And, but you read through all the prophets and so forth, you know, lo and behold, you know, they defiled themselves and turned away from Yahweh, and yet he was a good husband unto them. Okay, read on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, I am Yahweh thy Elohim, I am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers yep. upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Yeah, so he's going to visit that iniquity on those all those generations. Now let's jump over to Deuteronomy 4, please. And um, sorry to jump around here, keep trying to set the bit of the stage for the other speakers here a little bit. And uh, Deuteronomy 4, and let's go down to start at uh, 8. Deuteronomy 4 and 8. And what nation is there so great that has statutes... And judgment so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Now this is also taking place in the wilderness of Sinai. The Deuter Deuteronomy is the second reading of the law. Okay? <coughs> what nation has such statutes and so forth before you? Yeah, we set them apart. Gave them rules and statutes. A way of atoning for their sins. A way of worshipping him. You know, back here with the tabernacle and so forth provided for them, you know, from a standpoint of their clothes not wearing out and having the manna come down. And when they had the manna, they weren't satisfied and they wanted meat and they got the meat in the mouth, they want something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. See, it's a warning beforehand. Now take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Well, that means you can lose your soul. So you don't want to lose your soul, and that's, oh, that's Old Testament. No, no, the same thing still applies. You could still lose your soul, and you don't want to be in that state and condition. Okay? Take heed that you don't lose your soul. All right, read on. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. See, when, when Karma was giving the prayer, she's talking about cogent witnesses. It's important of those witnesses. And here in Deuteronomy, he's talking about don't forget what you saw, what you paid attention to, what you experienced. Because if you forget those things, you're going to be set up in a, in a state of condition where you're, not, you're, you're free falling. Those things are all set up line upon line, precept upon precept, to keep you focused on what Yahweh Elohim has done for them by bringing them out of bondage and so forth, but, but for, by forgetting the things that he did for them. Lo and behold, you can fall for anything. And it's the same thing with the information that we've received in these schools, that if you don't pay attention to what you've received and where you have it from and be assured of it, you could very easily be tripped up and get confused. You have to pay attention to all these things. 
They all set up a set up a table. Now let's read on. Especially the day that thou stoodest before Yahweh thy Elohim in Horeb. See, of all those things, especially the day where you stood by Yahweh Elohim, you know, in Horeb. Okay, read on. When Yahweh said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me. He's all not going to ask. Hey, listen to me over here. He's going to make them hear the words. And when he spoke off the mountain, they exceedingly quaked. They were scared. Even Moses exceedingly quaked, had that fear going on with him, and yet he spoke with Yahweh Elohim face to face, as a man speaks with a friend, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how you make someone hear. Mm -hmm. You know, you can wave your arms all you want, but when you get in, you have the reverberation taking place, you, you make them hear. And even though he's going to make them hear, they didn't have that heart to understand it. And that's later on when you get in Ezekiel and so forth, because he's going to give them a new heart and take out that stony heart. But the message still went out. So that there's no excuse. Okay, read on. I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And you came near and stood under the mountain. See, it's teaching their children and their children's children. And on down the line, that's important. So as much as they may be just little babes, they're going to tell the next generation and the next generation. If you don't pass that on, it's going to be forgotten. It's going to be missed. It's a crucial importance. It's not like you, this day and age and so forth, you can go back to the Encyclopedia Britannica. They weren't traveling, they didn't, weren't traveling around with that. You had to pass on historical information or you know, their ancestors and so forth. And how do you know they did that? Because when Moses was, was there in Exodus 53, he was told to go down here and listen, you know, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, that's how they knew. They, they knew the story by passing on the lineage and the promise that was given unto them. They couldn't read the book of Abraham, the book of Isaac, the book of... There wasn't. Moses was told to write it, right? And he tells you that in the beginning, the beginning of Exodus 20, 24. But they knew the story. So we go home, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac. The Elohim, that's how you knew as well. That's the whole process, especially when you're going into a society or culture where there's gods aplenty and deities aplenty. Although there's Yahweh and there's none else, the people of the worshiping of their own mind had all kinds of deities in Egypt that they worshiped and paid attention to. More so than Yahweh. Okay? I think I've done it with Deuteronomy 4. Let's go over to... Uh, uh, Jeremiah 44 and uh, 16. Just another example of the stiff-necked nature of the people there that are focusing on, you know, their own ways rather than Yahweh's ways. Okay? Jeremiah is another prophet. Okay? Jeremiah 44 and 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, let's, we will not hearken unto let's thee. Let's go up to 15, sorry. Verse 15. Thank you. Then all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women who stood by, a great multitude, even all the people who dwell in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not hearken yeah. unto thee. They've done something. They burned incense to other gods. And was something they shouldn't have done. Ezekiel saying they did the same thing and so forth. More and more witnesses to different prophets of what the children of Israel had done in disobedience. Okay? And they're coming and telling, they're telling Jeremiah here, Hey, listen. You know what? As for the word that has spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we're not going to hearken unto thee. Mm. They're tuning him out. Well, I'm not listening to you. Blah, 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 blah. You know, they're not listening to him. Okay? Read on. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes forth out of our own mouth. Oh, these names, they don't matter. You know, I've known these all, Lord God and Jesus Christ my whole life. What's this new stuff here? Yep. Well, when you do some research and investigate, you recognize that there was no letter J in the English language until some 14, 1600 years, a whole bunch of years ago. 1600, 1700s, right? So that takes that name, that letter out. Plus, there's no J in Hebrew, there's no J in Latin, and there's no J in Greek. Those are the languages of the day. So it's great to say, well, these are what you grew up on, but the problem is, is that with <laughs> deceptions reign from a long time. And when there's deception, someone's perpetrating perception because there's power. And when there's power, there's money and, yeah. and stature and so forth. They don't want to relinquish power. Right. Listen, Pharaoh didn't want to, with all the signs and wonders, he didn't want to let them go out of, e out of Egypt after 
you know, yeah, we had to harden his heart, of course, because he had to get them to the Passover with the lamb, right, to set the stage, right? Lamb slain from the foundation, lamb here to set the stage for Yahshua Messiah, the, the lamb, right? There, there's, you know, but people want to hang on to their power, right? They don't want to give it up. <laughs> there's lots of witnesses in the in your newspapers all about those kinds of things, and and or in various countries and places. If you got someone who's got power, they don't want to give it up. Right or wrong, regardless of whatever, blue or red or whatever, people don't want to give up their power. Right? Or corporations or whatever, anybody who has power and so forth. Hey, I, I work and I manage different things, a relationship with the customers, and I get a little um, agitated if somebody's trying to dictate or mess in that relationship, even if they're, you know, because I want to look after that piece of it. I don't want my power usurped because I want to make sure that I've got a paycheck coming in. But then again, you ask the question, who's making the moves? Oh, my boss. Oh, my boss can do what he like. He signs the check, right? So, mm -hmm. so these people are going to do whatever they want to do over here in Jeremiah. So let's go down to uh, keep going. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the yep. streets of Jerusalem. The queen of heaven. If you can do look up that in Strong's and so forth, I'm not going to do it now. There's other folks that can, can do a better job looking at the queen of heaven and so forth. But you do your, do your research and look at the queen of heaven. What's that? There, the god, god Isis or so forth, I think, if you look into that and stuff, that's, that's the queen of heaven. Okay? Read on. For, we ha for then we had plenty, and we were well, and saw no evil. But since we ceased to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have lacked all things and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven mm -hmm. and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our husbands? Mm -hmm. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people who had given him answer, yep. saying, The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not Yahweh remember them, and came it not into his mind? Yeah, yeah I was going to remember the things that you did. Mm -hmm. They turned away, hey, we're going to do our own thing. The word of Yahweh, we're not going to pay attention to it. You know, we're going to carry on doing our own thing. And it's the same thing over here in Ezekiel as well. Over and over again, it's the same repetition. In this day and age, people don't pay attention and hearken to what they've received. And they run off with their own concepts, opinions, and run themselves amok. And that's why it's important to stay the simplicity of the, the doctrine. Let's go over to Malachi 2 and 1, please. <clears throat> Malachi 2 and 1. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith Yahweh mm -hmm. of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Yeah, they don't put it to heart. Again, the same story over and over and over again, right? All these examples. They didn't pay attention to the name of Yahweh. Didn't pay attention to his statutes. Didn't pay attention to these different things, you know? And when these carnal ordinances over here on this side of the church were, were all fulfilled and so forth, that adversarial spirit's trying to drag them over on the other side to have them, oh, they're still in effect, or this and that. They weren't given to us. But that's the way it goes is over and over again. Anyway, I, I'm grateful to be here. I'm going to have a seat. I'm looking forward to listening to some other speakers here and so forth. And it's a pleasure to have a chance to visit you guys again here in Syracuse. And I thank you. Our next speaker will be a visiting member from Southfield, Michigan, Dr. Victoria Hamilton.
Good evening. I'm really happy to be here today. Um, I think uh, I'm pretty young, so this is the first time I've actually like traveled to um, another class on my own. Um, some of you know my mother, so um, <laughs> she's always traveling around to different branches, um, and she loves going to all the conventions and things like that. Um, she'll go to Hamilton a lot. She's gone to, um, she always goes to attend the Chicago lectures. Um, I know we've had more stuff going on. I think some in, I think there was one in Arizona as well. So she's always traveling. That is, since all her kids are out of the house and grown now, that's what she does. Is she goes and she travels around and she goes and visits all the brethren. And it's actually very beautiful that we're able to go to all these different places and just feel welcome. That's what she always says. She says, I go and I stay at these people's houses. I've never met them before, but I, I have no fear because, you know, they know Yahweh so that I know that I'm safe there. And that's what's so amazing about that is that you're able to come to a place that you can feel that way. That's right. um, and not everyone has that, you know, even if you go, if you're out there in the Christian world and you go to a different church, you can feel very unwelcome there. Like, it's just... I, I visited a couple churches before. Um, I grew up in the class, so, you know, I've never really, like, seriously attended churches. But, you know, I'm always curious, and, and that's what we're here to do as well. We're not here to say, you cannot go and, like, check out a church. You cannot go and check out, you know, what other people are doing. That's what you're supposed to do. You have to go, and you have to research for yourself. Because for me to come in this class and say, Oh, well, I've been in it my whole life, so, you know, that, that saves me. It does, absolutely does not save me. <laughs> it is up to me to go out and to find and to know him myself. So going out and doing that research on my own and going to other classes and going to other schools, like, it's really what will get you to come back. You come back every time. That's the thing. Like, every time I've come back and I'm like, well... <laughs> Like, I got a little figured out over here. I'm just going to stay over here, you know, where, where I feel just there's that sense of calm, you know, you get when everything is chaos, which everything is chaos right now. Um, yeah. Then you always feel that calm. It's very, it's very strange. Uh, a friend of mine had said it to me once. Uh, there was a point, I think, a year or so ago where everything just seemed to be falling apart in my life. And she's like, I don't understand that you don't have a vice. Uh, so what do you mean? She says, you don't do anything like excessively, like you don't, you know, have these like crazy coping mechanisms, like you always seem very grounded even at your worst. And I was like, huh. I was like, this is a very interesting thing to have said to me. I was like, that's nothing but Yahweh. The fact that I have Yahweh is the fact that I'm able to be calm in those situations, the fact that I'm able to come back from whatever it is. Even at your lowest low, like Yahweh is there, and you have to go through those because it's death, burial, resurrection every single time. Like, he made it so simple for us. And the fact that we still, like, we still don't get it, you know, like, it's kind of crazy. You know, because it's not just, you know, death, burial, resurrection with, you know, your sleep cycle. Because every night you go to sleep and you cover yourself with those blankets. That's the death. And then you resurrect the next morning. Mm -hmm. So it's like that in your life as well. Like everything's not going to be great all the time. And because then we would go along and be like, well, I don't need Yahweh. It's fine. Yeah. And then that's how you end up like worshiping this golden calf. Mm -hmm. And that's how you end up getting in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so we go through those trials and we go through those tribulations to be reminded like that Yahweh is the most important thing in our lives. And we have to absolutely keep him centered in everything that we do. Um, and I'm really glad. I was very worried. Um, I brought my boyfriend to the class with me. Um, he's been a couple of times when he still lived in Michigan. Um, and he moved out here back in October. And I was actually very excited to hear that there was a class out here. I was like, okay, like, I hear them, and, you know, they're still preaching Yahweh. So that's really awesome. And so when I came out to visit, um, of course, my mother says, well, why don't you go visit the Syracuse branch? So here we are. We made it a point um, to come and visit, and I'm really happy to be here. But um, and when we were talking about the basics, and we talked about it, um, the previous speakers talked about it as well. We talk about that name and that the fact that there's like power in the name Yahweh. 
And I think I've explained it before to people like, you get real mad if someone calls you out of your name. Yeah. So how in the world do we think that we're just like, oh, you know, it's, it's too sacred to say. I'm like, okay, well, let me open my Bible. Show me uh, where it says that you cannot say the name Yahweh. Yes, right. Like, if you can show me that, then okay, then, then I look like, you know, the fool. But uh, you cannot say things. It's like un unstantiated claims. Like, they're just saying stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you cannot say something, and you don't have anything to back it up. And so it's just crazy, like, that we're out here, and we're, we're preaching this, this Lord God, Jesus Christ, but no one ever questions it, which is very interesting. Um, because, you know, we have all these other, they say, you know, other people have multiple gods and they don't ever question like, well, what's our God's name? If we say people have multiple gods, and then there's the word God, like, we never think, so what's ours name? Like, I don't really, you know, it's kind of crazy that we don't really like, we don't really think about that. Um, and I'm just really grateful that, you know, I wasn't out here with just this idea that Lord God and Jesus Christ, you know, will save me because, I feel like I definitely wouldn't be where I am now, um, definitely without Yahweh. Um, and what's really important as well is um, being humble. Um, I think that's something we all really, really had to learn um, is that, you know, you have to be humble when you're, when you know Yahweh. There's not, you know, any of us that are like, you know, I, you know, I'm better than you because I know Yahweh and like you just, you don't know anything. Like, that's not the point. Like, we're not here to, to tear you down. We're here to tell the truth. And that's all we're here to do. So it's just very interesting. Like I'm saying, like, we made it really, he made it so simple. He said, you know, like, we're going to make the tabernacle and it lines up perfectly with, with your body. He gave us everything we needed to know. Mm -hmm. And so we just need to make sure that we're diligent in seeking him out and we're diligent in like doing our research. And that's what's kind of been on my mind as well, that I really have to, you know, do my research. I claim all day, you know, I um, studied linguistics in college and, you know, I love to learn about those things, but without taking that and like seeing how it pertains to Yahweh, I'm not really studying that thing. You know, like, that's the thing. Like, he said we are given certain gifts, and those all point back to Yahweh. Right. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Like, people who are in the medical field, when they're able, I know so many people who are able to go through this chart so well, and they're able to tell you how everything pertains to him in this tabernacle. It's crazy. And, you know, I don't have that skill. You know, some people are really great at scriptures um, and other things. And like that gift that you have, you always have to make sure and that you take it back to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really interesting. Um, and I was looking, I just want to go over to this chart really quick. Um, we just got this chart um, in Southfield not too long ago. Um, but I noticed this up here, we don't have this. So I was just kind of staring at it a little bit um, when I came in. It's very similar to the 40 foot comparison Jesus. Right, yeah, I was just looking at that. So I'll have to definitely look at it um, a little later. But I think this is very interesting because it literally shows like every single event literally goes by the pattern. It's so, I mean, it's really, really simple. <laughs> Um, and all we really have to do is just kind of like, we just have to seek it out. And we have to ask Yahweh to, to give us those answers that we're looking for. Um, but yeah, and I have noticed this as well, how they've got, you've got all of these. This is very interesting and very useful. So I'll have to definitely, I'll definitely look at it. Um, I think as a kid, this was the chart that confused me the most. So <laughs> I'll definitely look into that because um, it, it definitely breaks down each age and dispensation like very well. So I'll definitely look into that. But um, yeah, again, I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, I, think, I think that's all that Yahweh has given me to say tonight. Um, and I look forward to hearing the other speakers um, and, you know, coming again. Yep. Hallelujah.
Our next speaker will be the Dean of the Syracuse Branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison. Good evening. Nice to see you all again. Been away for a while and uh, <clears throat> went to a lot of classes. Went to class in Orlando, went to class in Tampa, you know. Every chance we could, except one night. There was so much traffic and so many accidents we actually could not get to Tampa. Traffic down there is terrible. Anyway, brethren down there, send their love. They all send their love to you, okay? And now I remember your mom. She's had a few glasses of wine up in, up in our room <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> nice lady. You tell those folks in Southfield we said hello, please. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to the scripture reading. And... Uh, As nice as it would be to work with all of it, we're, we're not going to have time. So pick it up in 24, okay? Ezekiel 36 and 24. For I will take you from among the heathen. Now, who is this speaking? Mm -hmm. Yahweh. Yahweh. It says Yahweh Elohim. Ezekiel. And... Word of Yahweh, it's Yahweh speaking through the celloistic form. Yahweh speaking through Yahweh Elohim. Okay? And this is what he's telling them. Actually, he's right at them. <laughs> and he's, he's writing it down. He's, the, he's not leaving anything to chance. Nope. Nothing. Nothing's left up to Ezekiel the man. You understand? It's the Holy Spirit in Ezekiel. Go ahead. And gather you out of all countries. And I'm going to gather you out of all countries. Now, here we are sitting in here. We're from all countries. All countries. Right? All backgrounds, all different religions, all races, all sects, all creeds, all everything. And of course, in this covenant, there is no bond, no free, no male, no female, right? Yep. That's how it's supposed to be. Go ahead and read. And will bring you into your own land. Now, he's going to bring you into your own land, which ultimately is the body of Yahshua, which when I say that, I don't mean this. I mean this bride right here. That's the body of Yahshua. He's the head. The bride is the body. And the head and the body make up the assembly. Right? Make up the assembly. And when you come into the assembly, it doesn't have to be a physical building necessarily, but when you're part of that, you've come to your own land. Your own land. Not physical Jerusalem over there, not Rome, Italy, but up here, 
Heaven, up, right up here, right in, right in you. Go ahead. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Now he's going to sprinkle clean water upon you. Dominus fobisco mecum spiritu sancto. Right? Huh, what are you laughing about, Frank? <laughs> That's how it was when I went to church. Look, it's, it's not physical clean water he's talking about there. It's not physical clean water. Now, we're going to hold that thought, but keep reading. Finish it. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. I'll sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean. And you'll be clean. Now, he's not talking about taking a bar of ivory soap and clean, like you took a shower today, and showering up. Not that kind of clean, because that's just going to get dirty again. But cleaning you inside. Inside. Now, there were baptisms back here in this old covenant. When they came out of Egypt, as Lionel was talking about, and they received this covenant from Yahweh Elohim up here, and they said, everything you said, we will do and be obedient. This was a marriage that was performed here. They became his bride. And they made a commitment and they made a promise. And that was a covenant that was made, an agreement, right? Mm -hmm. And under this agreement, everything was physical. They had a physical building of worship. They had physical rituals. They had physical water baptisms. They had physical circumstances. They had physical ceremonies. They had a physical priesthood. They had physical suppers. They had holy days. Right? How many holy days mm -hmm. did they observe during the year? How many were there? There were seven. Three were mandatory. Right? Three were... They observed all the time, every year. But there were seven that they observed every year. It's back in the law, and you can read about them. There were physical water baptisms. There were sacrifices. And there was the Ten Commandment law. It was all physical. It was earthly. It was temporary, and it was natural, or it was carnal. There was nothing spiritual about this. The principles behind this were spiritual, but this itself was physical. It was carnal. This is what's referred to as the Old Covenant. And Joshua, when he came in, <laughs> you have to break all these things down, see? Matthew 5, 17, uh, Luke 24 and 25, and, and then 27 and 44. And we'll just get that for now. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Who's this speaking, Deb? This is Yahshua the Messiah. This is Yahshua the Messiah, the one we knew as Jesus Christ, properly identified as Yahshua the Messiah. He's telling them, he's, who's he talking to here? Mm -hmm. He's talking to Israel here, right? And he's saying, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Right. Right? See, Victoria was over here on these charts, and she was <clears throat> saying how everything went by these, this pattern, which, which is absolutely true. Well, it starts way back here, divine nature, theosophy, 
the angelic transgression, cosmogony, and then you've got the days of creation. Then you've got Adam, Cain, and then you've got the flood, and it goes with the Tower of Babel, Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and then here's the children of Israel. Here's Joshua, or Joshua, the son of Nun, Saul, David, and Goliath. Here's Solomon, and then see, these are kings, Daniel, the prophet, Jonah the prophet, this is apostasy, this is the birth of Yahshua, this is his baptism in ministry, this is his betrayal and trial. And then, it go, and you see, he's got to do everything on these charts is the law and the prophets. What he just said here, he came not to what? Destroy. He didn't come to destroy this stuff. Nope. You know, if, if he thinks it's important enough not to destroy, who do you think you are to say, it doesn't matter anymore, it's not important, we're not using it. Ah, I can't do, oh, don't get me going. Look, all of this stuff is important because it's witnesses pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. These are witnesses. This is his proof. This is, this, this confirms him. The law and the prophets confirms Yahshua the Messiah and confirms his mission, which was to what? Fulfill. Fulfill the old covenant and bring it to an end. So he's got to fulfill or finish all that's written about him in the law and the prophets, bring it to an end, and then on the day of Pentecost, he ushers in a new covenant. Seven years later, the Gentiles are brought into the body of Yahshua and they receive the Holy Spirit. In order for him to do that, he had to move this old one out of the way first or fulfill it, finish it. Now, this is what he's talking about here. Go ahead and read it now, Deb. Think not that I said I all of that just to explain this, and I, I don't mean to keep interrupting her, but go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. We're reading to give you a witness in the book that that's what he's doing. He did not come to institute water baptism, which is what they teach in Christianity. He did not to come to institute Lord's suppers, which is what they institute, in Christ, uh, which is what they teach in Christianity. He came to fulfill, which is the opposite of institute. Institute is stop or start, fulfill, stop, institute is go. Can I give you a simple example? Mm -hmm. You drove here tonight in a car, right? Mm -hmm. Unless somebody brought, came in a helicopter and you come to a red light and you went, right? And we didn't. You had to stop, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that means fulfill. Stop. The green light was when he said, go. Back here he said, go. Here he said, stop. Read it again, Teb. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. But read, keep reading. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth pass. One jot. 
or one tittle. Those are punctuation marks, read. Shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Till, uh, look, he fulfilled everything. You could spend all your time in class just studying the things he fulfilled. I've been here 43 years and I certainly don't know him. <laughs> Just, I'm scratching the surface, okay? As are a lot of us. Now, get Luke for me, please. You want just 44, or you want me to pick it up at 25? I want 25, 25. Okay. and then 27, and then 44. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, Old fools and slow of heart to believe. Now here he is, he's walking. He's on the road to Emmaus here. Uh, here, see? Down the road to Emmaus. Read. All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not to the Messiah to have suffered these things? And see, they're on the road to Emmaus and he has... Uh, this is after his death and his burial. In his resurrection, and they're wondering, well, pick it up in um, 24 or so. Um. Yeah, we're going to have to pick it up higher than that. <laughs> hmm. uh, 24 and 13. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I, I, I'd love to. I, I just don't have time, okay? Um, he's talking to these guys, and he's telling them, fools and slow of heart to believe. See, they haven't received the Holy Spirit yet because it hasn't been Pentecost yet. The Holy Spirit has not been poured out on mankind yet. So they don't understand in their mind yet why he died. They don't understand everything, why it happened the way it did. And the apostles are hiding and they're scared. And Do you understand? They don't know yet. It all changes after they receive the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and read. Back to where we were. Uh, okay, yep. then, then said he unto them, Well, fools and slow of heart to believe yep. all that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. You see, if you knew the prophets, you would know that I had to die, that I had to be buried, and that I was going to resurrect. See, there's, he's in a vision right now that they're seeing. This is a vision. This is after his resurrection. He did not resurrect a physical body. He resurrected a spiritual body. And that's what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? Read. And to enter into his glory? Read. And beginning at Moses. And now listen. This is the Messiah. And this is what he did. Now, this is what he did. And this is how Paul taught, too. And this is how our founder taught, too. Read. In beginning at Moses. He began at Moses, who wrote the law. Mm -hmm. Read. And all the prophets. And all the prophets. Didn't she just read over in Matthew? I come not to destroy what? The law and the, the, law and the prophets. Why? Because that's where he's beginning, and he's going back to teach them something. That's where he's going. Not some man standing up somewhere going, I had a dream. Look, you got one right here. Get this one learned. Go ahead and read. 
He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures, all the scriptures, the law and the prophets, right? Not the book of Revelation here. <laughs> the law and the prophets. Read. The things concerning himself. The things concerning himself. Now, uh, go to 27. 44. 44, I mean. And he said unto them. And he said unto them. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. While I was yet with you in the flesh. These, this is what I said to you. Read. That all things must be fulfilled. That all th Look, we could go to a lot of places where he says this. That all things must be fulfilled. Read. Which were written in the law of Moses. Written in the law. And in the prophets. And in the prophets. And in the Psalms. And in the Psalms. Concerning me. Concerning me. You understand? Yep. I'm trying to make this simple. Yep. Now, we're going to go to John 5. And I think it's up around... 36, when he's on the cross, and he's ready to give up the coast, ghost. John 5 and 36. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, mm -hmm. that the Father hath sent me. That the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself, who hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him you believe not. Search the scriptures. No, I, I missed it. You gotta go up higher. Where he says, it is finished. It's later on in John 19. It's John, it's, 19. it's John 19? Nineteen and thirty. Nineteen and thirty. Oh my goodness! When Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, "It is finished." So they, the soldiers, gave him vinegar to drink, right? Yes. And he said, "What?" It is finished. Did you ever ask yourself, what did he mean? What was finished was this. This was finished. He had fulfilled it. It was finished. Now, oh, I want to get the fourth chapter of, of uh, John. And uh, the this, this, this scripture reading, this, the last verse that you read, I want you to repeat that right now. And Ezekiel. The Ezekiel. The last verse that he read, which was... I will sprinkle clean water. Yes. You want that first? Yes. <laughs> Ezekiel 36 and 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. It says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Now, I said he wasn't talking about physical water. I have to give you some proof for that. So now we're going here to John, the fifth chapter, or the fourth chapter, and he meets this woman who's from Samaria, and he meets her at Jacob's well. And I would encourage you to read it from the first verse, and find out exactly what's going on. But let's pick it up uh, down further. Where? Yes, yeah, so you want to pick it up in nine? Five. 
Nine? All right. Uh, All right. Verse 9, John 4 and 9. Okay. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, who am a woman of Samaria? See, the, the people from Judah or the Jews didn't have anything to do with the people from Samaria or the Israelites. They didn't get along. They were divided. Now it's not like that in the new covenant. There's one body, Israel. But back then, they were divided. And that's a long story in history and, okay, Go ahead and read. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. That's right. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Elohim. If you knew the gift of Elohim. And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Give me to drink. See, he had asked her for a drink of water. Right. Right? Right. Go ahead and read. And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink. Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he wouldest have given thee living water. And he would have given you living water. Now, she thinks he's talking about the water that's down there in Jacob's well. Which is a type. It's pointing to something. But he's saying something about what kind of water? Mm -hmm. Living water. He will, I will give you, or I would have given you, living water. Living water. In other words, it's able to make you alive. It's able to clean your mind, clean your soul, clean your heart. And it really can. That's what the new covenant's all about. Read, please. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. The well's deep. And there's a lot of neat stuff about this. What well, this was built by Jacob. Okay? Yes. Way back. Going way back. Abraham's Grandson, read. From where then hast thou this living water? Where are you going to get this living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, <laughs> who gave us the well? She don't know who she's talking to. Right. This is this man created Jacob. It's, he's standing right there in front of her. She don't know that. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and read. And drank from it himself, and his sons, and his cattle. Mm -hmm. Joshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this well water shall thirst again. Look, when you drink of this well, you're going to thirst again. This summer, please hurry. <laughs> please hurry, summer. <laughs> when it comes, and you're out cutting your grass, and you're sweating, and you're hot, you're going to want that cool drink of fresh water. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to cut the grass some more, and you're going to want another glass of water. You're going to thirst again. Yes. Read. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him. But if you drink of the water, I will give you that living water, right? Read. Shall never thirst. Shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Springing up into everlasting life. Mm. Now I want to go over to John the seventh chapter and pick up um, 7 and 38. I'm, I'm cutting a lot out of this, and I'm kind of going through it quick. I'm just trying to give you an idea about something. Yep. Go ahead. John 7, and I'll pick it up at 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, let him come unto me 
and drink. Mm -hmm. Let him come unto me and drink. This is Yahshua speaking here. This is Yahshua, which is Yahweh in a body. This is Yahweh, or Yahweh Elohim, right in a body. Read. He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. And that's it, right? Yeah. Oh, what's up? What else does it say? As the scripture has said. As the scriptures hath said, what are the scriptures? The law and the prophets. You see how this is all tying together? Yeah. He that believes on me as the scriptures hath said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. Now, I have to segue for a moment. <clears throat> Up here in your brain, you have ventricles. Ventricle means what? Belly. Belly. You have your third ventricle up here produces cerebral spinal fluid. The clearest liquid on earth. And it comes out of here and it goes down your spine, it cleanses your brain and it cleanses your spine. It cleanses. Do you understand? So out of it, he, the Creator has put a witness in your body that out of your belly can flow rivers of living water. Now what he's talking about, he's saying, out of his belly shall flow river, he that believeth on me. Your speakers got up here. They believe on him, as the scriptures say. Right. Out of their mouth or their belly flow rivers of living water. Right. My hope is that the Holy Spirit speaking through me is doing the same. You don't want to know what Rick thinks, you want to know what Yahshua thinks, what Yahweh thinks. Now, when someone's sitting there, now go back to the scripture reading and pick that verse up again. I know we're beating it to death. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Ezekiel 36, 25. Now listen, this is important. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Listen, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's the clean water that's being sprinkled upon you. That's the clean water, the truth, the gospel, the name of Yahshua the Messiah. That's the living water. Not stick in the water, Kurt Plush. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. That is not what it is. Keep reading there, please, Scott. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And you will be clean. Clean. Living water will clean you up in here. In here. Read. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart or a new soul will I give you. Mm -hmm. Read. And a new spirit will I put within you. A new spirit will I put within you. 
And I will take away your the stony heart out of your flesh. I'll take that old heart out of you. I'll take that old hard heart out of there. And I'll make it new. Mm -hmm. I'll make it soft. I'll make it alive. Read. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will walk around and make choices and hopefully <laughs> you will choose to follow me. I will cause you to walk in my statutes. I will do it. I will. We don't have anything to do with it, except preach the gospel. You see how that, you see how that works? Mm -hmm. Rivers of living water. Now, oh boy. One last thing, Colossians second chapter. Oh, you could probably skip down and pick it up around. I don't want to start at one. I, I want to just do this. And uh, uh, I don't know. <coughs> Deb, what do you think? Are you talking about the fullness of the Godhead there? No, no, no. Having spoiled principalities and powers? I want... Nailing it to the cross. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Well, uh, we got. You might have to pick it up a verse or two. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Have to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> two and one. They push. They push me around all the time. Go ahead, read. Colossians two and. 12. Buried okay. With him in baptism. Look, when he got baptized, Yahshua, he had you in his mind. He took you in that water with him. Yes. And he finished water baptism when he got in that water. Yes. He didn't do it to start anything. He was finishing water baptism. Physical water baptism. It's not physical water baptism anymore. Read. Buried with him in baptism, in which also you are risen with him. And you're risen with him. Through the faith of the operation of Elohim. It's through the faith now. Yes. Of the operation of Yahshua. Oh, it's, it's not through works. It's not through using your hands. It's not through blessing yourself. Bless me, Father, for I have seen my last confession was a billion years ago. Let me see. Uh, I did, did everything except murder. <laughs> and your, uh, your penance is going to be a long one. <laughs> you understand? It's not any of that. Read. Who has raised him from the dead. He raised him from the dead. Read. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Look, we were dead. Yes. We were dead in our souls. Read. Hath he quickened. He Heather. quickened or what, what's quickened mean? Made alive. He made us alive. Right. He made us alive. Read. Together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Forgave everything. He forgave everything you did. Read. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. He, look, he blotted it, this right. out. Blotted it out. Right. The churches are trying to tell you you still got to do it. He's saying he blotted it out. Read. That was against us. It was against you. Why? Because you couldn't keep it. Right. Read. 
It was contrary to us. Contrary to us. Took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Look, nailed to the cross. He, when he was nailed to the cross, he nailed that to the cross with him. Do you understand? Yeah. It did not go past the cross. It did not go past the cross. Folks, it's nothing physical now. It's spiritual. It's in your heart. He ushered in a brand new covenant. And you just, you can come up and read it about it. Read about it here. See, it's, you translate it into the kingdom. A new heart, new mind, led by spirit law. The light and the anointing and everything. It's all going on inside you now. A brand new soul. A brand new heart. You're a brand new creature now. Well, there's a lot to this. You're a brand new creature. I thank you very much for your patience. I hope that this edified somebody. And our next speaker will be Dr. Margaret Trevison. Good evening to everyone. Okay. I've enjoyed mm -hmm. the previous speakers. I I always enjoy myself. <laughs> every time <laughs> every time I get to come to class, I'm like, oh, that was fun. Because there's always something. It's always so it's stimulating. It gets you, it gets you thinking. And mm -hmm. and um, um, Lionel was talking about that philoprogenitiveness and how you know that natural love of offspring. And to me, it's just this is what your father has set up for you. And he just loves you so much that he's just poured it all out. Yeah. You know, and he's and he's drawn it all out and. He's put the right spirit in him so there's people that can explain this stuff to you. Because when I came down here, I went to uh, Catholic high school. I knew very little about the Bible. I think I would because I was Catholic, but you didn't really read the Bible. They weren't, you know, or the Gospels or you didn't really do that. You just went to church and you listened to what the priest said and stuff. And they're responsible for your spiritual well-being, whatever. It wasn't until I came in here and I sat down and they told me the name was Yao and it's like, I never heard that before at my church, you know, and then I started, I went to the library and verified it and that to me was such a pleasure yeah. because of what, they were just telling me anything. They were saying, you should know this for yourself. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell me that at the church. They said, here's our catechism, memorize this and memorize that. Repeat it back to me when I ask you. Do you remember those? Yes. Who is God? Who made you? You know, all those questions and they had answers, wrote answers, but none of them really made any sense. But then you come down here and you can find out that, you know, somebody got up here and told me that, my, that God had a name and it was Yahweh. And I was like, I, I like to think of myself as not really uh, f stupid or um, what are you, easy, easily fooled. You know, I like to think of myself as like, I got something working up here and you're not going to fool me real easily. So I thought, oh, I'm going to be smart and I'm going to go down that library and I'm going to prove them wrong. Mm. And do you know that every encyclopedia I looked in, the name, Jewish Encyclopedia, Name of God, Yahweh, mm -hmm. Encyclopedia Judaica, then you go to the uh, Catholic Encyclopedia, Yahweh, I mean, it just, it, regular Encyclopedia, Yahweh, it was just like, Okay, they're not trying to fool me about the name. What else do they know? Right. What else do they know? Now that they're, I, I checked it out, and so I just my curiosity just kept me coming back again and again and again. Right. And come to find out that there's this amazing tabernacle pattern. And we find out that this tabernacle pattern is actually, yeah, it's, look right here, Elham. That's who we're talking about. Yahweh, pure spirit, takes on this visionary shape and form. And this, is, and this visionary shape, it's still Yahweh. It's Yahweh in shape and form that brings in this creation. And that's Elohim, is the archetype or original pattern of the universe. In other words, everything's made after that pattern. 
And when you, I came down here, and I just used to love, love, love when they went through this, this chart. The first few classes I was at, or this, I guess it's, it's what stuck out in my mind when I first came to class. Like certain things stick with certain people. Some people love when they hear the body tabernacle. As uh, Victoria was ex uh, expressing that there's, you know, people that got some medical background, they can go through your boom, 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 and convince you beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're made by that same pattern, right? right? And then the thing that impressed me, and I don't know why, because I was Catholic and I really didn't know that much about the Bible, but I loved listening to them run through here, blood, water, spirit. I just love that. And those people that used to get up here and do it for me, they're not here anymore. <laughs> I guess they didn't get it, you know, but we want you to get it. <laughs> so um, oh, there's so much that we've already covered tonight, but... I'm going to go with this. Let's go to, um, uh, what is it over here, this one? First John 5, 7. Yeah. And I wanted to tell you, too, you know, these charts over here, they're different than the 40 foot because all the writing that's on them, it's amazing because you can go over here and, uh, and pick something. Just start reading someplace. Let's, let's look at Daniel. Um, King's command, this is the court roundabout, this is the holy place, this is the most holy place. King's command hastens release very early in the morning. Does that ring a bell? Anything else happened very early in the morning where people were released? Yes. Ring a bell, doesn't it? Yes. It's the children of Israel coming up out of the Red Sea very early in the morning. And so he just, he's written down the principles here so you can read it and you can, you can see the line running. And that, this is just an expansion of that elementary chart. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. So you've got here the lion's den, and there's two there's soldiers, and it was sealed. It was sealed with the king's seal. Do you know another thing that was sealed with a stone that was guarded by men? Mm -hmm. yep. It's Yahshua's yeah. tomb. Right. Every single thing on here is in the law, and it's the prophets pointing out Yahshua the Messiah, right. his death, his burial and his resurrection. It's just so, this is just, this is easy peasy. The work's done for you, really. All you have to do is look at it. Um, lion's den, uh, king sealed den's, den's mouth with a stone. And he actually put a seal on it too, the king's seal. Uh, El Yahweh Elohim has sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth. They have not hurt me, for innocency was found in me, and you, O king. So there's an innocent one here. Yes. How about Yahshua, who goes up in front of Pontius Pilate, and Pilate goes, can't find any fault in him. Right. And that's just the same. So this, in principle, is the death area of your tabernacle pattern. So uh, Daniel here is being put to death, going down to a lion's den. You don't expect to see him again the next morning. You think he's done. And then his enemies, it says right here, enemies were destroyed. So what happened? The guys that, that got him in the lion's den were thrown in there after he was resurrected. So they went to hell in principle, his enemies. Get it? So you got the righteous spirit and you got the other spirit that's not righteous. And there's going to be a separation there. Although right here it looks terrible for the one that's right. right. It looks, he's, that's bad. He's going into lion's den. You think, oh no, Daniel. Done. But when Yahshua's on your side, it's like your father's got your back. Mm -hmm. your, father, his, your father's got your back and he's pulling you out of that deep, dark pit. Right. And that's where you were before you walked in this door. Yeah. You were just like Helen Keller. You couldn't see, you didn't know what anything else was except you could feel it. But Helen Keller... She used to have fits because she didn't know what things were and she couldn't understand them and they scared her. And she would have like temper tantrums and run to her mother and all her mother could do was hug her and rock her. <clears throat> she couldn't get to her. She didn't know how to explain to her because she was deaf and she was blind and she was dumb. And she's in this dark, dark world, not, not understanding anything that's going on around her. And it freaked her out every single time. But guess what? Her father had a lot of money. 
And he searched and searched until he found someone that could come and was willing to come and try to teach his daughter. And some of the doctors said, you can't teach her anything. There's no way, you can't teach her. That's how you and I walked in here. <laughs> unteachable in principle we were blind to the truth we never heard the truth before we couldn't speak the truth we were all mm -hmm. Helen Keller mm -hmm. and then we come in here and someone speaks to us or little by little tries to give us a little understanding who feel this this is water and they put the the words water this is a dial feel the dial this is dial do all this is a cup cup and they kept doing it over and over and over and over and over. It didn't click at first. That's why you say to tell people, please come back. Yeah. It doesn't click the first time. But when you hear, after, it's going to click after a while. You're going to get it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go, the light bulb's going to go off. And you're going to go, when's the next class? When can we go again? What time was that class? Where is it? Is it close by here? Are you going to go to another city and go, is there a class in this city? You know, you start doing stuff like that because you, you're getting your eyes are open. And it's just like Helen Keller when once she got that first water word, which was water, that she understood. And the reason she understood it was because she didn't, she wasn't, she was good for like 18 months or something. She had a memory of water. Wawa was how she remembered it. And when she did it and that connection made, she realized it and it's just like this whole world opened up. Then she's going around, okay, what's this? Okay, what's this? Okay, what's this? And just crazy. Mm -hmm. But her father had money. So what I'm trying to express to you is your father, your creator, look at what does he not own? Right. Yeah. What does, what's not his? Right. He owns it all. Right. And her father was rich and when she went to learn, he had the books she needed copied into Braille so she could read them. Mm. He had money that he could do that. And I'm trying to explain to you that that's how rich your Heavenly Father is. Mm. He can explain it to you. Mm. Whatever you need explained, He's going to make sure you understand it. Right. It's His job to make sure you understand because you are His. Right. You're His. He's called you. He's collected you. Now he's tutoring you and he's bringing you up in the truth. So now your eyes are open. You can speak the truth. You're hearing the truth. You're not Helen Keller anymore. You're one of Yashua's. You're Yashua's son, daughter. So I just want to go through this. Let's get that um, 1 John 5, 7 and 8. 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Just quick over here, you got the Father, pure spirit. You got the Word, which is pure spirit in shape and form. And you got the Holy Spirit, which when he came into a physical body here, he took on a physical shape and form referred to as the Holy Spirit. So you got the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these are, these are one. We're not, that's, it's not a trinity. Not a trinity. It's a unity. It's this same, this stuff takes on shape and form, it's the same Yahweh, it's Yahweh working his purpose, and then Yahweh comes in for salvation, Yahshua. And you know, this quick little side thing, he does a lot of saving that you don't even know about. Because when I was down in Albuquerque, Diane's driving, she's not really familiar, but we're with uh, Brenda and uh, Reba that know their way around Albuquerque, right? So we're, you know, she drives up and we're just red light and Diana goes this and she goes it's a five-way thing the other two girls in the car that knew their way around was cool with me because I didn't know the road or anything they went <gasps> they were like holding their breath and we we're like and then we got through the intersection they go oh. we go what they go you were supposed to go then this is like a five-way and there's and we're talking three lanes of traffic in all five of those categories so it's not like just one lane. There's three lanes coming into this crazy thing. And we just went, whoop, whoop. And me and Diane are like, so? And they're going, we were just saved. Hello? You just got rescued. We didn't even know why it was funny. And stuff like that happens right. all the time. Whether you know it or whether you don't know it, Yahweh is salvation every day of your life. Not just at the end of your life, but every single day of your life. So we've got... And go ahead with this scripture. And there are three that bear witness in earth, 
the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And these three agree in one. So you got spirit, the water, and the blood. So just quickly, I want to take the last few minutes that are left here and show how the blood, water, spirit goes through here. Maybe we can get over on there a little bit too. So you've got Adam and Eve here. Oh boy, the blood's... <laughs> It's just, it's so hard to try, you're trying to work everything in, trying to point it out, Yahshua, he's born in the garden, he's going, uh, Yahshua's buried in the garden, all right, but he's got the, he's going to eat by the sweat of his brow, right, that's water, that he's going to end up having to go to a grave, that's death, he's going to have to die, he tells him, he's going to be buried, and, but there'll be uh, resurrection through childbearing, so we got the 63 generations that start here after they get out of the garden. Eve starts having children, you've got to go down the 63 generations. So there's a principle of blood, water, spirit, or death, burial, resurrection. Then with the flood, you can, uh, you can see the water, obviously. The death decree, he, yeah, Noah gets the vision that all, the end of all flesh has come before me, death. That water above, water below, they're caught in between, that's a burial. And that is the maiden voyage here. And it's a resurrection. And that's a typifying Yahshua. So, and the first one out what, is Noah. He didn't say, oh, let my wife go first, ladies before gentlemen. No. Why? Because this is a virgin, and a virgin's going to give birth to what? A man. The first one out is going to have to be a man, because you're going by the scriptures. Why? Because Yahshua was born of a virgin. So you got blood, water, spirit, or death on the whole earth, burial, and resurrection of the ark. And then next you've got the children of Israel here. And you can see the blood. They had to put the blood on the four points of the door at the Passover. They had to kill that lamb, put the blood on the four points. They were buried in the Red Sea. You've got that over there with, um, he tells you, over in Corinthians, he said, and they were buried in the baptism unto Moses, baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So you've got blood, water, and you read that it was a spirit in the cloud that led them. So you've got blood, water, spirit, or death, the death, the tenth plague was the death of the firstborn. Death, buried or buried in the Red Sea, resurrected into the wilderness. Blood, water, spirit, or death, burial, resurrection. And it all comes from this, this pattern that Moses was given on top of Mount Sinai and that the children of Israel actually built in the wilderness. And this is how the children of Israel worshiped for 40 years here in the wilderness till they went over and then they, this ended up inside of the temple. But you've got the same principle. You've got the altar there that everything that hit it died. And the, 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 the sacrifice and the priest would be washed or buried in the laver. And then there was a holy anointing oil that was poured on the priest so he could resurrect and he could minister properly in the holy place. So you've got blood, water, spirit, or death, burial, resurrection. And look at anything that hit that altar of a, the lambs, the stuff that hit that altar had to be alive. They couldn't put like rocks and, and um, dirt. dirt and what else, fiberglass or they couldn't put anything that didn't have life in it already. They could not sacrifice something that didn't have life. Even vegetables pulled from the ground, they're alive. You know, you pull them from the ground, now they're going to start to decay. That's pointing that all life is in him. That's where we get our life right. from. All life in him. Right. You only get life from life. You can't get life from rocks. You can't eat rocks and pebbles and think you're going to live. Right. You got to inject, you got to take in something that has life of itself. See what I'm saying? And you're sitting here and you're taking in this stuff and it's life. It's the Holy Spirit is life. Look at even that name Yahweh. You breathe. And when you stop breathing that, guess what? Mm -hmm. You're dead. Mm -hmm. It's life itself. That's what we're talking about down here. Not just some fun things that work together and it's a coincidence. No. You always got a whole purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation. So if you're interested in salvation at all, you want to be here and you want to be paying attention. So you've got blood, water, spirit here. Now this is the baptism of John. I know it looks like he's on a cross here, but he's pointed out as a lamb because that's having that's boop, the blood's on your head now. You're the lamb, lamb of Yahweh. What about the lamb of Yahweh? Oh, over here they had to look it all over. It had to be what? A male of the first year without spot and blemish. 
uh, they had to take the, pierce it in the side to drain the blood, right? Well, doesn't it all speak of Yahshua? Every single little detail does. It's all pointing to Yahshua to convince you, you do have a savior and he's done the job for you. You just have to come in here and get rid of the Alan, Helen Keller ears and eyes and get rid of that stuff mm -hmm. and look and see that you really are sitting under the truth. So there's death. What happened? Let's get Matthew 3.13 because this, I mean, you can read it, read it right along in the book. There's no mm -hmm. fooling with it at all. Mm -hmm. We only have a couple minutes left. I'm not going to get over to that other chart. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe I'll sneak over there after this. We'll see. We got five minutes. Matthew 3 and 13. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Keep going. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And wasn't one of your speakers talking about fulfilling, instituting and fulfilling? Here is Yahshua fulfilling. He's come to John to be baptized of him, and he's saying to him, well, you should be baptized in me. Why is he saying that? Because you read up earlier in that chapter, all of Israel went out to John confessing their sins mm -hmm. to be baptized. He didn't have any sins to confess. So John goes, oh, wait a minute, you should be baptizing me then. And he goes, no, John, just suffer it to be so now. We're fulfilling here all righteousness. And then he suffered him. Then what happened? Then he suffered him. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove. Do you see spirit? Spirit descending like a dove? There's a death sentence on this lamb. Death. He's buried in that Jordan River by John. That dove descends. It's a spirit. Blood. The blood's on his head. Water in the Jordan. Spirit. Blood. Water. Spirit. Death. Burial. Resurrection. He resurrects into the wilderness for how long? Keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay, then in the, uh, Matthew 4 and 1, Then was Yahshua led up of the Spirit mm -hmm. into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. He was hungry after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, but he was tempted of the devil. 40, got blood, water, spirit, 40. Now you know why it rained 40 days and 40 nights over here. Now you know why they spent 40 years in the wilderness. You've got to have a principle of a 40. And according to Moses' vision, Adam and Eve were in the garden 40 days, according to Moses' vision, because they are actually in the realm of eternity. So you've got that 40 going all the way through there. There's just so much. I mean, if you want to be convinced that you have a creator that is your salvation, this is the place to come. You're not going to get this anywhere else up and down the street. So it's got death, burial, resurrection, 40, blood, water, spirit, 40, tempted of the, in the wilderness for 40. Don't they have an issue with that mystery of iniquity in here for the 40 years that they're camping out here? Absolutely. See, this is a pattern of salvation, and it's showing us salvation, which is Yahweh is salvation. This is what it's showing us, that he came in to be salvation. Now, do I have a minute left? Let me think. Let me see. I got one minute left. Where, where, where? All right, let's just, we'll just pick one. We'll just pick one. We'll just pick one. Um, well, we already did it with Daniel. He had the death. He was buried in the lion's den, and he resurrected. And guess what? When he resurrected, he comes up glorified, because look, he's second to, to the big shot, who it was at the time, I forgot. Whoever was head then, I don't know, Pharaoh, let's see, Daniel, judge of all, exalted to third position to help rule Babylon. He entered as a captive, knows both archangels, Michael and Gabriel, and I'm not sure where he's, what, he's, what he's thinking about here, but we know that in the most holy place of your pattern, you've got the, the Ark of the Covenant, and you've got two angels, and they're typifying Michael and Gabriel, just like in your brain. You've got the two functions of the brain. In the most holy place, you've got the two angels up here, right, on the Ark of the Covenant, typifying Michael and Gabriel, and you know that there's two functions of your brain, our motor and sensory. I mean, just this is science. 
That's the Bible. I mean, it just, it all works perfectly together. Perfect harmony, just the way it's supposed to. But if the, if the creator doesn't explain it to you, it's just like Ann Sullivan, if she didn't show you this, you wouldn't know it. You gotta come here to get it. So thank you for your attention. And I guess we could all rise for the doxology. I encourage everyone to come and study with us any chance that you have. You'll be glad you did. And now unto Yahshua, who alone is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Yahshua, our Savior, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all times, we'll all say, Hallelujah. hallelujah.